Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game of Chessable Masters 2020. This time I would like to show you the game which I think everybody was waiting for. Magnus Carlsen, number one in the world, triple world champion, uh, also in the rapid time control. He's ranking 2881 in rapid time control and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Hikaru Nakamura, number four in the world, 2829, that's his rapid ranking uh, and he's gonna play as black so without further ado let's see what happened on the board magnus carlsen opens with d4 we have knight on f6 c4 e6 knight on f3 d5 so queen's gambit declined nothing fancy here so far knight on c3 bishop on e7 and bishop on f4 so you know uh, one of the favorite uh, magnus carlsen moves we have castle uh, and now a3 as hikaru nakamura does nothing to prevent you know uh, any attacks on c7 so magnus said okay i can castle but i also can prepare and now b5 is the is the issue here because bishop cannot jump to b4 you know to uh, to threaten the the check uh, which would force of course white to to move the the knight back or the bishop but as bishop you know still pointing on c7 then probably the knight that would be unpleasant so a3 and asking um, naka what are you doing now with this c7 are you gonna do anything naka said no i don't care knight b on d7 uh, and now knight b5 what about now and here naka already cannot play c6 okay c6 that would be the the blunder because after bishop on c7 the queen is quite trapped so the only move to escape is on e8 uh, and now knight d6 and black doesn't have a choice have to sacrifice the exchange okay and now uh, this white would be exchanged up so uh, not this way but this position was actually reached couple of times knight on e8 was played uh, and now simply e3 so magnus um, is waiting uh, developing now as black position is a bit cramped now and here black usually plays a6 c6 kicking the knight and you know get things on track uh, just standard queen's gambit declined structures however there is also one very risky very sharp line d takes on c4 usually black waits with this move and once white uh, develop the bishop then this is the time but here there is no time for black so d takes on c4 we have bishop on c4 uh, and here again a6 is the main move kick the knight uh, play b5 after uh, bring the bishop to the game you know on the long diagonal and everything should be fine so for example a6 knight on c3 b5 and now bishop b7 and and this way uh, also knight on d6 was played in this position and after exchanging uh, c takes on d6 and it also looks good for 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 black i mean you know black has le less active position but it's all everything very very standard uh, symmetrical pawn structure one open c file probably you know very very drawish however hikaru nakamura plays c5 and it's kind of novelty uh, but there is one problem with that move which uh, magnus carlsen uh wants to do and he just he just do it so d takes on c5 and the point of this move is actually making a space for the knight so now after a6 which hikaru nakamura played we have knight on d4 so knight don't need to retreat anymore to c3 uh, and it's centralized very nice the square for the for the knight so far we have bishop on c5 castle and now the problem is there is some uh, tactic here uh, if black want to play something like b5 kicking the bishop the problem is knight on e6 uh forking the the queen and the rook okay it's not like you know winning move but it can be very unpleasant f takes on e6 bishop on e6 and the position of the king is 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 you know not not really so secure for example now queen on d5 and white gonna be very active attacking the the rook so knight on c7 can defend the rook attack the the queen uh, attack the bishop looks quite scary but after bishop c7 queen c7 rook f on c1 look at this uh the rook is still under attack the bishop is attacked twice 
Uh, also, the defender of the bishop is attacked, so white gonna have a lot of compensation here and should should win that, that game. So queen on e7, preventing any tricks on e6, now defending e6 one more time, uh, and now we have rook on c1. Bishop on d6, uh, but one more move here, e5. What if e5 is played? The, there is no problem here, because bishop on f5 attacking the queen, uh, and f6 is not possible because the pawn is pinned so everything is fine with the position knight on d on f6 the knight can retreat to e2 and everything is fine so bishop on g6 challenging this bishop magnus carlsen doesn't really care because after bishop on a2 this this bishop can stay on this diagonal it's very safe over there also if needed can be moved to to b1 and attack on h7 so uh, pretty nice so if bishop on f4 then e takes on f4 now f5 is coming can be prepared with the with the rook uh, and with the knight attacking on e6 with the bishop attacking um, on e6 it can be very unpleasant so definitely not the greatest idea this is why hikaru plays knight d on f6 uh, and here magnus plays knight on e five knight on e5 so his pieces start to be very very active what to play next probably the best for hikaru would be something like knight on d5 knight on d5 uh, attacking this bishop let's say bishop on g3 knight e on f6 and uh, this bishop can can move to b1 and maybe try to construct something on the uh, on the king side uh somehow maybe maybe e4 maybe e5 kicking this knight the queen could join on h5 it's not easy position for black now okay after letting white to uh, to to move the, the the knights in the in the center these knights are really really powerful here so hikaru tries knight on d7 okay uh, knight on d7 the point is there is uh, there are some tactics here and this position is so rich in tactics and uh, for example knight on f7 it's it's not maybe not the best move however even these tactics could work because after rook on f7 we have bishop on e6 pinning the rook and after king on h8 let's say bishop f7 queen f7 knight can retreat to f7 uh black can try to win the pawn so bishop on f4 e takes on f4 queen f4 but then we have the tactics here okay queen on d7 and uh, and this position okay white won only the pawn uh, but this is you know pawn up so there are a lot of tactics but magnus found the best move in the position here and he play knight d on c6 what a move what a move look at this so uh, what is the idea of course the queen is under attack and also uh, this square is covered also this square is covered so the queen has you know not many squares to go only two squares to go now uh, first what would happen if the if the b takes on c6 of course this is obvious knight on c6 then the queen of course have to move so queen on f6 let's say uh, and now bishop d6 attacking the rook so knight on d6 queen on e6 uh, and now knight on e7 is coming so probably rook on e8 and the game can continue white already won the pawn uh, and have quite dominating position here so uh, black have to be very careful here they are already pawned down so hikaru nakamura doesn't accept that and he play queen on h4 or queen on f6 but that would be the same because magnus said okay i want your queen to be on f6 so he played bishop on g3 we have queen on g5 hikaru say i don't want to go there i don't like that square but magnus said go there h4 you have to go there my plan is to move your queen <laughs> to f6 uh, and now if hikaru is still stubborn and don't want to go there queen on h6 let's say then the problem is knight on g4 attacking the queen and now if queen on g6 then bishop d6 attacking the attacking the rook uh, the problem is you cannot really take with the knight because you're gonna lose the queen so that is the problem so you have to take the knight and now you're gonna lose the exchange uh, and the pawn so probably the game 
So uh, in this position, if you try a queen on h5, which maybe looks better, but you still have to watch at this, uh, at this tactics. You see this tactic taking the queen. For now, it's not dangerous because two knights, you know, uh, defense f6, but there is something else. Bishop on d6. And as you see, one knight already moves. Uh, now knight on e7 with check, king h8, and now queen d6. And after queen on g4, let's take the knight, uh, rook c8, rook a on c8, knight c8, rook on c8, and now uh, being the, the bishop up, of course, is the it means that white is winning the game. So uh, Hikaru Nakamura cannot be st stubborn anymore, and he had to play queen on f6. At least after the knight is moves, then the queen can attack on b2 uh, and attack the bishop. Uh, we have knight on g4 attacking the, the queen, so queen on b2, uh, and now bishop on d6 attacking the rook. Uh, and of course, we still have this move knight on e7 with tempo, so uh, knight on d6 is not really great because this knight on e7 is coming, and after king on h8, queen d6. And we already know what's gonna happen. Uh, even black takes the, the bishop, then knight on c8, and after exchanging the stuff, white gonna be up the knight, this time the knight. So knight on the bishop doesn't really matter. It's one extra uh, piece, so of course he's winning. So uh, Hikaru takes uh, the knight, b takes on c6, we have rook on c2, now saying, okay, you're not gonna take my, my bishop, so that's a very nice intermezzo move. So queen on b5, and only now bishop on f8, uh, knight on f8, and uh, once the, you know, dust settled down, let's see what just happened. So uh, white are up the exchange, and also uh, there is the, the pawn, okay? This is the, this is the pawn which is weak, so that's probably gonna fall. Uh, and to highlight uh, his position, probably Magnus could go for queen on d4. Queen on d4, uh, and then, I don't know, rook on b1 is possible, rook on c5 is possible, just to n dominate this position, as black still have all the pieces on the 8th rank, only the queen is in the field, okay? So, uh, this is a pretty the problem. However, Magnus has different idea, and he plays one of his, you know, trademark moves, uh, h5, h5, h6, this is the idea. So queen on h5 uh, immediately was actually possible. Maybe Nakamura thought, okay, queen on d8, and if I take, then uh, queen on e8, bishop b7, uh, queen e7, and it's not really great for me, okay? My bishop is under attack, I cannot really defend it because the another rook is coming, so so that's not great for me. He could bishop on b7 play immediately uh, to defend the, the knight, but it's still not so easy, you know. Queen on b6, um, still harassing this bishop, then uh, the rooks can come, and it's not so easy actually to defend the pieces. So at the end, uh, he would have to, you know, exchange the pieces, uh, not in really great, you know, um, circumstances. So uh, what happened here is h6. Hikaru Nakamura plays h6, uh, stopping h6 for now, and also making some breathing space for the king, just in the case of the h rank issues. Uh, we have queen on h f3. Queen on d8 would be very strong here. Magnus Carlsen could play that. And for example, c5, defending the, the knight, uh, that would be the option. However, rook on b1 and this queen has to run. So queen a4 still looking at this, at this, at this knight, but white actually doesn't need to care. Rook on c5 and after that exchange for this bishop. And yeah, that would be the position where white is still winning, okay? Being exchanged up is is really, you know, uh, a huge advantage in this kind of endgame. So uh, after h6, this was possible, but Magnus has different idea. Queen on f3 attacking c6, okay, twice. Uh, and here, I think Kikaru Nakamura should play bishop on d7, uh, try to defend that. It's not so easy. He would be in the totally passive position, rook on d2, and he could take on h5 then, rook f on d1, rook on d8, and 
yes, the position is is very difficult, but but it's you know still possible to play. But it's passive, so probably uh, Hikaru Nakamura didn't go uh, for that this way. So he take immediately. The problem is now queen on c6. This pawn is lost for free. Uh, and now the queen attacks the knight, the queen attacks the, the rook, so uh, it's quite serious threat. So Hikaru tries knight on c7 first, uh, and if white gonna take the knight, then black can take the knight on g4. So that is the idea. The game can continue, white of course winning, uh, but you know, Hikaru Nakamura is defending stance, so he has to find the moves like that. Uh, but Magnus plays absolutely the best move here and he plays queen on f3. This time threatening, you know, discover attack on the queen with the check. So that's the idea. As there are no knights on e8 and d7. The problem is knight on e8 cannot retreat because queen can take the rook and win the game of course. So uh, we have knight on d5. The knight is also under attack. So knight on d5. This is the only move and now defending f6. Uh, the problem is the knight gonna be kicked. We have e4 by Magnus Carlsen and this knight of course cannot go because, because we still have this on the board. So that would be uh, of course lost. So Hikaru plays e5 and after knight on h6 he resigned the game. So Magnus Carlsen got his revenge, uh, you know, from the from the last tournament from Lindores Abbey, and he won uh, this game, at least the game. Uh, and he resigned because the queen is under attack, the king is under check, so there is only one way uh, he can play queen on h6, but then bishop d5 with the attack on the rook and double attack on f7 wins the game. So, for example, rook on a7 wins this bishop, that is the that is the one idea, and if bishop on d8, then we would have queen on f7 with check, King h7, queen, queen g8, king g6, and now rook can join. So uh, rook c6, bishop e6, and after let's say bishop e6, knight on e6, rook on e6. Keep in mind that the queen is also under attack. So after king on g5, rook e5 first, and only now you can take the rook, okay? So uh, that is the idea being up you know, two rooks, of course, is enough to uh, win the game. And Hikaru Nakamura knows that all. So this is why after knight on h6, he just resigned. Uh, and I would like to show you the standings. So uh, here we go. Magnus Carlsen and Vladislav Artemiev, six points. They are qualified. And Alexander Grishuk, in the really, really last moment, he found a very nice, you know, tactic and he won against Pentala Hare Krishna. So in the really, really last moment, uh, he got his five points and he won. And very, very dramatic. Daniel Dubov, who had a really great tournament, a lot of great games. He also got five points. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, he is eliminated from the from the tournament. He lost the game against Hikaru Nakamura, so uh, this was decisive. Uh, big drama, but as you see, a lot of uh, good players here, and somebody you know had to be knocked out from the tournament, and that's what happened. Daniel Dubov and Pentala Hare Krishna uh, are out. So uh, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other tournaments game and other games, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.